Jessica Geffen here with you for Singapore Symphony Orchestra's Ask Me Anything. We've had such a fantastic time exploring the five musical soundbite episodes from Carnival the Animals by Sassons. We've been so impressed by all the wonderful questions that you've been sending in and your beautiful pictures that we decided we wanted to share it all with you again for this very final time where we're going to read out the questions and I'm going to answer them here for you. I've asked some of my very special friends from Australia to read the questions out on your behalf. Are you ready? All right, let's go with question number one. Why did the composer include non-animals such as pianists and fossils in the carnival? That is a great question. All of the carnival the animals seem to be animals like the kangaroos. We hear from the fish in the aquarium. Uh, we hear from the turtle, the tortoise and the hens. And then all of a sudden we have the pianists and the fossils. It's kind of unusual to have them at a carnival of animals, isn't it? So the reason why he did this is it was actually his way of having a musical joke with his friends. He thought that the pianists doing all their fast exercises up and down very noisily on the piano were the wildest animals of them all. And the fossils was a little bit of a, a little wink to all of the music that he includes, all the fossils, the old music of the time that he includes in his music of that piece. So it was his way of having yeah. a musical joke. Who's got question number two? Uh, I think I do. If the clarinetist up is playing, oh, I'll put that one. If okay. the clarinetist is playing off stage, how do they know when to play? That's a really great question. It's um, when something says on the musical score, and, and when you saw the music for the cuckoo in the depths of the woods, it said on the music, dans les coulisses, which means uh, to be played off stage or behind the stage. So there's a few ways that they can do this. One of the ways, when you have a big stage in a theatre and you have a conductor, sometimes they have a very hidden, sneaky little camera which will film the conductor and I can conduct into the camera screen. So when the clarinetist is in the wings or behind the stage, they can see the conductor in a little TV screen and they follow the conductor's beat pattern in the screen. So that's one way they do it when they have a bigger theatre. Yeah, who's got question number three? Yeah. Hugo. Which movement do you like the most? That is such a tricky question because they are all so exciting. I think for me, one of the ones that I love the most would be the aquarium because it is so beautiful and peaceful and it's so beautifully written that it makes me feel very calm inside. So I think that would have to be one of my favourites. Who's got question number four? Uh, I do. Is Sasson your favourite composer? Who else are your favourites? I have so many favourite composers. I think I change my favourite every single day of the week. Uh, but I do love Sasson's, but I also love music by the French composer Debussy and the English composer Elgar and Tchaikovsky and Dvorak and Brahms and Bach and Mozart. There are so many, all the Beethoven symphonies. I get to conduct so much wonderful music and I love them all for very different reasons. So a little bit of a tricky one to answer. Who's got question number five? Here you go. Why did you choose to become a conductor instead of a violinist? You play the violin so well. Oh, thank you. This was a very nice question from someone in Singapore. Well, I always knew I wanted to be a musician, but then when I started to conduct a little bit, I realised that I love seeing all the different parts come together. And when I played the violin, I was just one of those parts, a bit like seeing just one colour on a painting. But when I became a conductor, I got to see all the colours on the painting. I got to see all the different parts coming together and it was sort of a different way of me being able to tell the story. So that's one of the things that I loved about being a conductor, but it's pretty, pretty exciting when I get to pick up the violin. It's not very often, but I get to do it sometimes. So that's a bit of fun too. Who has a question number six from our Singapore me. questions? Yes, Liv. How many instruments can you play? Oh, well, I guess properly would um, the answer would be violin. But when I was younger, I learned piano and I did trumpet for a little bit. I've played percussion in an orchestra before. And as a conductor, I need to be able to play a little bit of a lot of instruments. 
So I've tried my very hardest to, to play a little bit of lots of things so I understand all the techniques behind them as well. Yeah. Okay, so who has question number seven? Me again. Lib. I really like the flute, but I'm only six. Is it too early to start learning it? Well, with instruments, there's not really one rule that suits all. With a wind instrument, it's important that you have the right size hands and fingers, but also your lungs so that you can breathe nice and deeply when you play the wind instruments. So sometimes they say maybe about the age of seven, right? But definitely, if you're six and you want to play the flute, I think that you will be able to do that, no problem. Who's got the next question? Uh, I um, do. Yep. Our family loves the duet you did with your sister. Have we ever performed together in an orchestra where you conducted and your sister played the cello? Ah, that's a great question uh, from one of our watchers. So my sister Sophie and uh, we played together in the very final uh, musical sound bites number five where she played the swan and we swapped the parts together and we have performed together many times we both played together as a duo and i've also conducted her for things where she was a soloist for the very famous elgar cello concerto and uh, col nidra and a few other things we've done several things where she's been the soloist and i've been the conductor which is pretty special when you're working mm. with your sister yeah that's a great thing to do who's got our next question i think we're up to number nine Liv. Why did you choose classical music instead of any other type of music? Ah, yeah. So somebody asked this. Why did I choose classical instead of the other genres? Well, I don't think I really ever did. I've always loved classical music and a lot of my work conducting is in classical. But I'm really lucky that I get to explore lots of different types of music. So I work with jazz, I do opera and lots of ballet conducting. I do big, big film scores. And I also get to do rock and pop and all of those things as well. So in my job as a conductor, part of it is being able to do lots of different sorts of music, which I really enjoy. And they all kind of cross over and, and you know, that the same things that I look at on a score will be the same, whether it's classical music or if it's film or if it's jazz. I have the same kind of things that I need to do as a musician. So it makes it lots of fun. Do we have another question? Yeah, we do. Yes, yeah, let's do number 10. What other hobbies do you have apart from performing music? What other hobbies do I have? Well, I do spend a lot of time performing music and looking at scores, but I do, I love to cook and I love to go on bushwalks with my family and down at the beach, bike rides at the beach. And I really love to travel. That's something else I like to see, all different parts of the world. In fact, one of my favourite parts of the world where I've spent quite a bit of time is Singapore. I love Singapore. It's a wonderful place to visit. I think we have one final question. I have it and it is conducting easy. Ah, yes. I think it was Eddie that asked this question. Um, well, is conducting easy? Well, let me tell you, because this is a, a tricky one to answer. It's a little bit like running. So you all run, don't you? Mm -hmm. You can all run, fine. Yeah. But can you run like an Olympic runner who's winning a 100 metre sprint that fast? It's a little bit more difficult if you're going to be at that level. So if you can all put your hand up and we can all conduct something like this, we can all wave our hand in two. Can you do that for me? You can show me how you conduct in two. Yeah, and if you conduct in three, you might go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So we can kind of conduct, can't we? Yeah. So to some level, we can. We can keep the music in time. But when you're conducting an orchestra or a group of musicians with what's in the score, it takes a lot of study and knowledge and technique and a lot of practice and, and to know all the different instruments and how they all work and everything that you do. It's got a lot of different things to learn. So it's kind of like being an Olympic runner. We can all run, but we can't all run an Olympic level and do the sprints because we don't have the right technique and fitness and understanding of how to get faster and the training that goes into it and the years of, of practice. So it's a little bit like that. So I think that there were most of our questions that we got asked by everybody there in Singapore and from all around the world. I think we had some questions from other places as well. And I think to finish off, 
we were going to show some pictures that people had drawn for us over the time. Yeah. I know, but did you guys have something you can show? Look, there's a yeah. beautiful bird yeah. here from Emily. You have your elephant, your piano, Hugo, that's great. What about your lion yeah. there? And we also had quite a few that were sent to us, so we can't show them all, but here are just a few to show you. We have this wonderful picture of Annie, who's five years old, and she's holding up her two brilliant pictures, one of a lion and one of the hen or the cock from our first episode. A great big smile from five-year-old Annie there. And what do we have next by Stacy? So many brilliant pictures. Look at the aquarium. I can see the tortoise and the elephant, that tricky kangaroo, the person with the long ears, and the lion. Some wonderful pictures there by Stacy. Next, we have a very fiery orange picture drawn by Stella of our roaring lion. I can hear those roars as I look at that picture there. And here's a very colourful one. I think this one might have written on an Amber, Alexis and, and Katie. It's a brilliant picture there. Look at all the brilliant colours. A wonderful aquarium here drawn by Kayla, who's 10 years old. She did a musical aquarium. I like the music notes. They're swimming around all of the fish. And next we have the beautiful swan from episode five, drawn by Rose. And she's also added in our kangaroo, another kangaroo. What a tricky one to draw. You did a brilliant job, Rose. Well done. Then we have our wild ass and I think it's a big purple elephant drawn here by Olivia. Some brilliant pictures. Thank you, everyone. So thank you so very much for all your wonderful questions and your drawings as we completed the five musical sound bites for Singapore Symphony Orchestra's Carnival of the Animals. It's been wonderful exploring them all with you. Remember that you can go back and you can watch all the musical sound bites and you can also check out the playlist with Singapore Symphony Orchestra performing the music for you right at your own home. That's it from me now. A very big thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.